Hi, I'm Brad Seipert and I teach software development topics on my YouTube channel and today we're actually handling a request. I had someone reached out on LinkedIn to me uh, earlier today and they asked if I could do a tutorial on uh, putting together authentication with Supabase um, for Flutter. So we're going to do that today. Uh, let's get started. I have started a new project already. Um, and I have went ahead and installed the Superbase Flutter plugin. Uh, so if you haven't yet, you can just run um, Flutter pub add Superbase underscore Flutter. Uh, I'm using Flutter version manager, so there's, there's an FVM in front of that. But if you're not using Flutter version manager, don't type the FVM. Um, it'll add this to your package. And I know, sorry, it's a little weird not having me do this on camera, but the first time I run my Flutter application, my computer comes to a crawl if I, excuse me, if I am streaming or recording. Uh, so just trying to avoid that for all of us. Uh, like it might be doing right now. Okay, so let's change some stuff, right? So we don't want this homepage crap. We can get rid of this. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. And for home, we're gonna set this to a scaffold um, we're going to give this an app bar just to give it a little bit of space at the top. Okay, we'll give this a body. I'm going to call it sign up. Uh, we'll create a widget called sign up here in just a second. Um, actually, let's go ahead and do that now. So we can hit new file, sign up dot dart. Uh, I want to make this a stateful widget. We're going to call it sign up. Um, and the reason we want to make it a state full widget is because we're going to use text editing controllers here in just a second. So we have a column, some children. Uh, we're going to say we want a text field. Controller is equal to email controller. Um, and then we want another text field. And this one's going to have a controller set to password controller. We haven't created these yet. We'll create them in just a second. And then we want like a material button. Oops, sorry, material button with an on press listener. And this on press listener is gonna actually do the thing. It's gonna log in our user. Um, and then we want to give this a child with some text. Uh, and then this will be something like sign up. Okay, let's add our controllers really quick. So we can say final um, email controller is equal to text editing controller. Great. We can add another one here for password controller. Now these are bound up, that's pretty good. This gives us a, a really good start. Let's go ahead and run this. Make sure, oh, our main.dart needs to be saved. So let's come back here, import sign up. Go ahead and save it. Make sure, okay, cool, that looks good enough. Uh, you can obviously design this and make this better on your own, um, in your own time, but for now this should work. Uh, so one thing we wanna do is we'll come back to this text field and I'll just mention obscure text. If we set this to true, it will prevent people from being able to read this value, which is a good practice for passwords. Um, now let's talk about setting up Supabase, right? So if we come into, uh, sign up, we can import package Supabase Flutter, and then we want package Supabase Flutter, Supabase Flutter dot dart. Uh, we want to get a handle on our Supabase instance, so we can say something like Supabase dot instance dot client. Okay, and assign that to Supabase here. Uh, now we can come down to our material button and do something like superbase.auth.signup. Um, password, give them an email too, since we have that. And the way we're gonna get these values are we're gonna just take them out of the text editing controller, right? So we have our password controller and our email controller. We'll take the text value for both of those. We'll call sign up. Uh, this returns a, a future, so we need to make this an async if we wanna use that. Um, so we'll make this an async function, final, um, auth response is equal to await superbase auth. Okay, my uh, language server is running a little slow right now, apparently. Interesting, let's try that. Um, that should be fine though. 
And then we can actually use this auth response, right? So if we're here, we can say something like, let's do a scaffold messenger dot of context dot show snack bar. Let's do a new snack bar. Content is equal to text. And we'll say something like uh, logged in. And in our case, we have an email address that we're requiring, so we can use the email, right? So we can say auth response dot user dot email. Okay. Uh, and then email, oh, the uh, user could be null, right? Am I reading that right? Because the receiver can be null. Oh, okay, sorry. So email could be null. Right? Oh, user could be null. They both could be null. That's fine. Um, there are a couple warnings here. Build context, this shouldn't be used across gaps. So let's go ahead and pull this out. We'll make this a scaffold messenger. Final SM is scaffold messenger of context. A uh, little quick fix for that. Um, same thing with like dialogues and all sorts of navigators, all sorts of things that you would look up via a context. Uh, if you use it in a wait, you probably should put those before that. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, it's, that's how easy this is. So if we come back to our main.dart, we need to make a couple changes here. We want to, you know what? Uh, we want widget binding, widget, widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialized. I never remember the name of that. And then we want to await super base. We'll have to make this async if we want to use that await. So it's super base dot initialize. And then we need two things. We need a URL and an anonymous key. Okay. Uh, so let's go get those values, right? So if we, let me just make sure that I'm still streaming my browser, okay. Um, we can go to, if you log into Superbase, you'll see something like this. Uh, you might have to create a new project. I created one called Superbase Auth Tutorial. I've already kind of poked around at this to make sure that this would work as we expected. Um, you can hit on settings down here, go to API, and this is gonna give you your URL. So we'll copy this value. We'll take that back to VS Code. We'll paste it in the URL section. We'll come back to our browser. We'll copy our anonymous key. Right here it says a non-public. This is the one you want. Do not use your service role. Uh, anything that is sent to a client via like a mobile APK, an IPA, an app bundle, whatever, you should consider it compromised. Um, don't send secret keys through, you don't hard code secret keys in your application. Don't even put secret keys in your application. Find a way to avoid them. Okay, so um, this ensures that our widget flutter binding is initialized. Um, I know that's exactly what it says. That sounds a little redundant. The reason I'm mentioning that, you have to ensure initialized before making certain calls, like initializing super base in this case. Uh, run app will call this for you if it's not already been called. Um, so in our case, we are calling this right out here. Uh, so we can do these things before we run our application. So now that we've hit this point, we can go ahead and hit restart. And we have something like brad.cypert plus four at gmail.com. Uh, and then some arbitrary password. We're going to hit sign up. We should see a scaffold messenger right down here. Logged in brad.cypert plus four at gmail.com. We can come back to Superbase, click on authentication over here. You can see there's our new user. It used an email to sign up. Here's when it was created. We have not received verification for that user. So I've got an email that is asking me to verify my account. Here's the user ID. You should use this value if you're doing stuff with row level security for that user. Um, it's also like if you have data and you wanna attach it to a user via relational database stuff, uh, use this user ID. That is probably what you want your foreign key to be. Not the email address, not the phone number, because as it's fairly obvious, the phone number is not required. Email is technically not required. Um, display name is not required. So yeah, hook onto the ID because that's gonna be your best bet. Um, I think that's about it. So if you were to do a login, it's the exact same thing, except instead of calling sign up here, you would call login. Right, off. Well, let's check. I thought it was login. 
Exit session, sign up, sign out. Oh, sign in, sorry. Sign in with password, not log in. Uh, but yeah, you would call that instead of sign up and that would get you everything you need to do. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that there are a couple different options with uh, Supabase. So you can sign up with an email and password. You can sign up with a one-time password. So you would just use an email and then Supabase would email that individual a one-time code and they would enter that one-time code. And it's a little bit more complicated, but this is the standard email password flow that you could use with Supabase. Um, I do think they have a couple other options uh, that you could use. So I think they have like social providers that you could sign in with as well if that's that's your cup of tea. Um, and then additionally, Supabase itself has so much more than just authentication. In fact, they actually started as like a, a Postgres on steroids kind of solution. Um, I've used them for a couple projects, mostly as, as Postgres on steroids. And uh, it's been really, really great. So it was kind of cool to do another video for them. Uh, well, for a person who wanted to learn more about Supabase. Um, but yeah, check them out. They do a lot of really great things. They're free to get started, which is really nice. And if you ever wanted a SQL um, alternative to Firebase, uh, Supabase is your team. So Postgres all over the place, authentication. Um, they have storage, uh, database, edge functions, real time, all sorts of really great things. Um, they've, if AI is your thing, they've baked AI into their um, table experience, their, their Postgres table experience, which is great for someone like me because SQL is not my strong suit. So I can ask the AI like, hey, what does this query do? Um, is this safe to run? That type of stuff. Uh, or what are what are the potential, potential consequences of running this query? Stuff that I probably should be a little more comfortable with, but it never hurts to have someone or something to ask. Okay, that'll be it for this video. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. We got through this pretty quick. Superbase auth, so easy to use. So is Firebase auth. And I know there are other options, but this one hopefully is a little bit more helpful, especially for larger projects or things that wanna do things outside of the constraints of Firestore. I think that's about it. Have a great day.